In this update, we're watching two big storm systems in the week ahead. So we got a lot to cover in this update. So we're going to delve into the details and get going with an area of low pressure that's highlighted across the Carolina coast. The National Hurricane Center is actually flying into the system later on this afternoon to investigate, see if they can actually find a low level center out there. But nonetheless, most model guidances has this pushing inward into the southeast bringing some very heavy rain and eventually i think drifts it more northeast bringing those areas of impacted with heavier rains across the northeast later on into the week but at the same time we'll be watching a more of a significant trough that will be diving in out west that's going to bring some much cooler temperatures and end the heat wave for many for those areas out west but we'll also pick up the severe th storm threat I think that starts on Tuesday and it goes into Wednesday, Thursday, possibly even Friday. So we'll have multiple days. We'll be looking out for severe weather. But right now, uh, the main story is right off the Carolina coast. We do have Invest 95L out here. It has a 50% probability to form it in something tropical. Now it's it has a short window. I think it's about 36 hours if it's going to turn into something tropical subtropical more of a hybrid type system but it really doesn't change the impacts with this system because we're, we're expecting some very heavy rains to spread into south carolina north carolina in fact as we head into tomorrow we do have an elevated risk for flash flooding as that low pressure center will likely start coming ashore so anywhere from myrtle beach to florence to fayetteville down here to Jacksonville, up here to uh, you know Greenville, all the way up into Virginia Beach, do expect very heavy rain upwards to one to three inches, if not more, as we head into Monday, especially at those areas into Tuesday. This will slowly drift inward and likely start to deepen. And there is a small window, even based on the latest you know short range high resolution guidance in fact the HRRR has it you know going down all the way to a thousand three millibar now again whether this turns into something hybrid or subtropical and gets a named storm or not really doesn't change the impacts with this system because we are still expecting some very heavy rain as it comes ashore sometime on monday afternoon in and around the myrtle beach vicinity spreading those heavier rains and then the right front quadrant with the even heavier rains that spreads into north carolina during the day on monday so here's your overall wind estimates based on the latest high resolution guidances yes there are some 40 and 50 mile per hour wind gusts moving inland so it does appear to have a a short small window right now we're about 36 hours for this possibly coming ashore and yes, the latest guidance based on some of the high resolution models has this down to a, a thousand three mill, millibar low pressure somewhere in the vicinity of Myrtle Beach area going into four o'clock tomorrow, Eastern daylight time. So we are expecting to this move inward, whether there it's, this takes a name stormed or not, it really doesn't change the game. It just adds another storm to the list because it will be a short lived system if it does get named because it will be moving inland. And as it does, it's gonna continue to spread those heavier rains and flooding rains. So yes, some of these areas over several days could pick up three to five inches of rainfall is definitely not out of the question but the big picture kind of looks like this right so we're going to have a little bit more of a, a kind of a, a mega blocking type pattern really starting to shape up and this is what indications because we do have the ridge that builds over the top here that typically tries to lower pressures underneath that's why i'm favoring a little bit more higher window opportunity for this storm system do in fact take tropical characteristics but out west it's going to be that significant cool down that many of you are been waiting <laughs> with all those triple digit heats that you've been dealing with as of late and even for those areas back into phoenix i think monday especially into tuesday you will finally break that 100 degree streak that's been going on since the end of may crazy stuff out there but that uh you know that streak i think finally uh comes to an end so on the big picture it kind of looks like this all right even on the european ensembles takes it even a little bit lower millibar low pressure off the carolina coast 
because we got the kind of the ridging the ridging that's built you know builds over the top we've got that trough that willy grill come in and then this setup right here this is the favorite area that will likely take on severe storms in the week ahead with that convergence zone really starting to highlight it across that region as that low pressure center the trough that just kind of meanders and hits that high pressure and kind of creates that boundary and produce those showers and thunderstorms as we kind of bubble up the atmosphere so kind of looks like this on the 500 millibar you can kind of see it a little bit better as we head into that tuesday wednesday thursday with that omega blocking pattern really starting to take shape we've got the low pressure center that's highlighted across the east coast we've got the trough out west and then the middle you kind of have that battle zone start to take shape and then we are entering that second season so this isn't like that highly unusual to see some severe weather coming back into play especially with those clash into clashes in temperatures and as you get a trough out west and uh, heat building through the middle part of the country and you got the 500 millibar winds really starting to dip down this deepening area of low pressure i'm not looking for like any significant severe weather but nonetheless we still could have some strong gusty winds some some quarter size hail potential uh and some you know heavy rain but including the lightning so right now we do have a marginal risk for severe weather during the day on Tuesday through Montana, back into the Dakotas, back into western portions of Nebraska, eastern Colorado there, and northern portions of New Mexico. I think the dry line will start to get active and this will meander and move a little bit further uh, eastward, but it's not gonna move very much. There's the, during the day on Wednesday, we have that area of low pressure that's diving down into nevada and then lifting northeast so we'll bring those cooler anomalies back into british columbia and kind of fishtail further south with the with a line of strong to severe thunderstorms that's going to be highlighted across the dakotas again it pushes out of western nebraska back into central nebraska by then getting into kansas and eventually i think it even clips those areas into western oklahoma and the texas panhandle while yes we have that low pressure center which would likely be just the kind of the remnants of whatever that comes out of that storm system off the carolina coast likely impacts myrtle beach on monday afternoon kind of sits and spins so by wednesday morning it's highlighted across virginia back into west virginia and will finally begin impacting those areas as it drifts northeast bound into pennsylvania and areas of new jersey so even on the day on wednesday night going into thursday again this low pressure center still continues to shift up into the northeast heading up into canada by then and on the on the on the tail end of it we'll be looking at a kind of a thinner squall line of severe weather along that boundary with the cooler anomalies out west and well above average temperatures out east and we'll be watching the remnants of whatever's still left of that area of low pressure and again even on thursday we'll have another day of severe weather and it drifts just a little bit further east you can see it's it's more or less started out in western nebraska on tuesday and by thursday it drifts several hundred miles throughout the state so now you're talking eastern portions of nebraska will likely going to be impacted with those severe storms and eastern portions of kansas getting into the oklahoma vicinity by then staying into the texas panhandle i think most of texas actually misses out on any severe weather besides the you know the uh, you know texas panhandle uh, so overall kind of looks like this as we head into Friday again we'll just the remnants of the cooler anomalies will start to wind down off the southeast we've got the cooler anomalies still impacting all those areas across the west and there's likely will we be your cool front with very warm temp temperatures at ahead of it and you're going to be heating up in a big way uh you know throughout the week so if you break it down between now and friday it kind of looks like this we've got still the remnants of francine whatever's left with the area of low pressure and kind of the stalled frontal boundary today into tomorrow over uh, arkansas mississippi back into alabama and then you got get go then you get going on tomorrow with the heavy the rains that will likely be you know whatever comes out of that tropical system off the southeast coast 
will likely bring some flooding rains through the Carolinas, North Carolina, going into Virginia, and that will only shift into West Virginia, portions of Pennsylvania, and eventually head up into New Jersey. And then we kind of have a little bit of a monsoonal flow. Uh, I do think with the first system that comes down, we'll be bringing some heavier rains, uh, cooler anomalies for Nevada, back into Idaho and Montana. And then you'll have a little bit more of a monsoonal flow that comes off uh, into the desert southwest will bring some beneficial rains and some isolated rains in some areas that you really haven't seen much of anything as of late. And then, of course, there's the severe weather will likely unfold across the Texas Panhandle, Kansas, Nebraska, back through the Dakotas. And eventually by Thursday is going to be swinging into Minnesota. But going overall, if you look at the temperature anomalies throughout the week, just because you know you have the cooler anomalies into the southeast because the remnants of francine whatever's becoming off that tropical system off the carolina coast and then just these area of low pressure center will continue to spread clouds and rain will keep the temperatures down and then you have the trough out west will continue to you know remain cooler anomalies out west and then you have that omega blocking and across the middle part of the country the northern states, upper Great Lakes, good part of the northeast will continue to remain on the warm side. It's really not until, we'll say Sunday, that's your first official day of fall, we'll have another deepening trough that will start to dive in out of Canada. And then out ahead of it, we'll have that first cool front really modifying by then, but we'll finally push across portions of the central U.S. and bring more of the I guess you would say average type conditions are what you would typically expect uh, this time of year. But yes, as we head into maybe early next week, this is not until your first official day, you know, all day long because fall starts on the 22nd. We're at around 7.44 uh, Central, Central Daylight Time. But nonetheless, we'll have a more significant trough around the 23rd time frame diving into Idaho, into Montana. This could be some of the coolest temperatures you've seen <laughs> so far, so far, and even bringing some snow showers in its wake. So we likely could be even looking at maybe even a, a some winter weather advisories, even winter storm warnings for you know montana by then and to idaho and some of the higher elevations this would likely shift into wyoming and get in, into those mountain regions of uh, colorado and yeah it's the first time we've been able to show the snowfall map here uh as that low pressure center will be likely diving back in doesn't get going until the 23rd but the 23rd and the 24th time frame through the higher elevations of idaho montana uh, you know, northern portions of Utah, back in some of those higher elevations, 5,000 you know, feet or up. Yeah, we could be looking at some fairly significant snows building, building in, uh, you know, by that time frame around the 23rd, 24th. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Why I protect you before and after storm.